Hey you lot, Parth here, how's it going, how are you all doing? It's been a while since I've made a video where I sort of just sit down and chat with you, sort of lo-fi kind of video and so I thought I'd make one this week. Now, what I've got lined up for you today is a talk that I did last week at a competition called FameLab. Now, FameLab is basically a science communication competition where uh, competitors get three minutes to talk about any science, technology, engineering, or math subject. And you have to explain whatever you want from one of these fields to an audience of lay people. Like I said, in three minutes and with no PowerPoint presentation or no notes or anything like that, all you're allowed is yourself and whatever you can hold or put in your pockets to bring on stage. So because I'm sort of trying to learn a bit more about science communication, about talking to you guys about physics specifically, I thought I'd give this competition a go. And so there were two rounds that I managed to get through. The first round was just a general sort of almost audition of sorts. And in that one I spoke about unraveling Albert Einstein's genius. Now I didn't manage to film that talk, but luckily I've made a video exactly on that topic previously on my channel. Check it out. And then the second round that I got into was actually the regional final, so some of the best candidates that had applied for the previous round that were in the London sort of general area were at this event, basically. It took place in the Science Museum, which was quite cool in itself, and there were some really interesting people there as fellow competitors. But I won't talk too much about that now. Let me just quickly explain what I was talking about. Now, like I said, three minutes to explain a science concept to a general audience, a lay audience, somebody who doesn't know the specifics of in my case, physics. So this was a challenge I really had to think about. I had to plan a fair amount in advance about what I was going to say, and I decided to go for a fairly complicated topic as well. The fact that electrons and other quantum particles are indistinguishable from each other. Now, what that actually means, I'll leave for the talk when I play that back next, but I have a couple of things to warn you about. First of all, I have to apologize for how I set up my camera. It turns out the autofocus wasn't working as well as I'd hoped, so a lot of the first chunk of the talk is really quite blurry, but Towards the end it gets quite good, and I'm fairly visible, so yeah. And the second thing was of course because the camera was sitting on a table far away from where I was actually standing and talking, the audio isn't perfect either. So all in all basically, I'm just telling you that this is a pretty crap video. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy it, let's get straight into it. Um, okay, your next uh, speaker will be uh, Parth Gafalka. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Parth! Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you with fabulous eyebrows in the audience will have heard the saying, eyebrows are meant to be sisters and not twins. Now, this is because you'll know that in most cases, getting both eyebrows to be equally on fleek is actually quite a difficult thing to do. But then we just need them to be similar and not identical, right? However, today I'm going to be talking about electrons, little particles that make up a big chunk of the universe, and these are completely the opposite. They are most certainly twins and not just sisters. What do I mean by this? Well, quantum mechanics, the area of physics that deals with such little particles, actually tells us that there are very interesting properties about electrons, and the one that we're looking at today is the fact that they're absolutely 100% identical to each other. They have exactly the same mass, exactly the same charge, exactly the same everything. So what, what does this mean? First of all, what would happen if it didn't have exactly the same mass? Let's say this one had a, a heavier mass. We could call this particle A, and we could call this one particle B, and we'd be able to follow them. But we can't do that, right? They're absolutely identical. So this takes away one way we have of distinguishing between these particles. However, there is another way that we have, luckily, that could work. The fact that they're different particles, right? They might be identical, but at least this one's separate to this one. So why don't we just call this one A anyway, and this one B, and then track them as they go about doing their thing. Yeah, quantum mechanics is not that simple, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> let me explain, let me explain. Let's say I set up a detector over here for electrons, and I set up a second detector over here. Now, electrons are moving here, so I detect two electrons, and they move this way, and I detect two more electrons. Fair enough, right? However, I have absolutely no way of knowing whether between these detectors the electrons travel like this, or whether they swap positions, or whether they tangle up into some weird quantum soup. All I know is that there are two electrons here and two electrons here. That's it. Weird, right? Now, we've, we've established that these electrons cannot be distinguished from each other, but what does this mean for, well, everyday life? Well, if these electrons really are indistinguishable, we can't tell them apart from each other, then this means that we should be able to take two electrons of the universe, swap them over, and absolutely nothing should change. It should be exactly the same as before, because we can't tell the difference between this and this. So, the equations of physics, whatever they predict will happen in this situation, is exactly what we should predict to happen in this situation. What does that mean? Well, um, when we follow the mathematics through on this, we, leave, we get led to a rather surprising conclusion. That electrons cannot occupy the same region of space. They can't overlap. This is an interesting thing. This is rather profound, because that's exactly what leads electrons to stack up in shells around protons and neutrons when we form atoms. 
rather than all piling up together. But then this shell behavior of electrons is exactly what leads to, well, chemistry and how elements interact with each other. So let's recap this, right? Anything we can see or touch or feel in this room, anything that's made up of ordinary matter in our universe, um, is going to be built up in a very specific way as a direct consequence of the fact that electrons are twins and not sisters. And if that doesn't make you raise your eyebrows, which should be sisters, by the way, then I don't know what will. Thank you for listening. All right, guys, so that was my talk. Now, there was a second section after the talk where the three judges that you see on the right half of the screen were asking questions to each uh, contestant for about two minutes. Um, but I'm not going to show you that. This video is long enough already. And no dudes grew up a couple of other questions. Well, never mind. Let's not go into that. So anyway, like I said, really fun to do this talk. And it's not something that I've done before, speaking to an audience specifically without any notes to hand. Like, I think I really enjoy public speaking. I really enjoy talking to an audience live but I've never done it without something to, you know, guide me. Not, I don't necessarily just read from what I have in my hands, but usually I have something like cue cards to tell me what my next point is going to be or something like that. And you know, I never used to pride myself on my memory. That's why I did physics, because I don't have to memorize stuff. I can just work stuff out, right? So this was a big challenge for me and I really enjoyed doing it. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video as well. If there's any questions that you have, then definitely leave them down below. I'll try and clarify stuff that I haven't been clear about. And also, if I've said something that isn't quite correct, then let me know in the comments down below as well, and we'll discuss that, and hopefully clarify for anybody else reading the comments. Now, it is worth noting that this whole talk was based on the assumption that we're looking at electrons which do not interact with each other. In other words, we're not talking about the Coulomb force that results in charged particles repelling each other. Aside from that, I don't think there are many other caveats to my talk. But yeah, like I said, I think it was a really good experience for me to have done this. I met some really cool people and I just had a great time in general. Hopefully I'll be able to do something like this again in the future because this really helped me understand how to speak to an audience and how to interact with them rather than just talking to a camera and teaching you guys some concepts about physics that I learned during my degree or during my master's or whatever. And oh yeah, before we go, I have to ask you the weekly question of the week. How can I have forgotten? Now this week's weekly question of the week is going to be related to what I've just done. Public speaking. My question is, how much do you enjoy public speaking and how often have you had to do it? Because as far as I know, a lot of people have to do some level of public speaking when they're at school or at sixth form or whatever, if that's related to your job. So it doesn't have to be at school necessarily, just any situation of public speaking. The reason I ask this is because in my experience, there are a lot of people who are absolutely terrified of public speaking and there are a lot of people who absolutely love public speaking. Now I fall into the second category. I absolutely love public speaking because people have to sit there and listen to what you have to say. But also I enjoy the whole element of almost treating it as an art form, like talking to an audience is almost like putting on a character where you're trying to explain something, but in an interesting and engaging and funny way. So I like doing that kind of thing. Uh, tell me about your experience. Do you hate it? Do you enjoy it? Yeah, what's your opinion on it? So anyway, that's the weekly question of the week. Bit different from, from all the physics-y stuff, but it's an interesting one to ask, right? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I've talked long enough in this video now, and I hope you enjoyed the talk. Again, sorry that it's a fairly lo-fi kind of video, but we'll be back to the normal annotated and explained videos pretty soon, hopefully next week anyway. So I will see you then. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye.